Hello and good evening, everyone. Welcome to tonight's career discovery presentation on money moves after high school with Bank of North Dakota. I am Stacey Holtheimer, University and Student Development Coordinator at Bank of North Dakota, and I will be leading you through today's webinar. During this session, attendees will learn basic financial skills for life after high school. Some housekeeping items in the menu of the webinar, there is both a chat and a Q&A function that we encourage all of you to use for the questions or comments that you have about tonight's webinar. We will answer questions at the end of the webinar, but please put them in the Q&A when you have them. It is now my pleasure to introduce to you our speaker tonight, my coworker, Lance Hill, who is the Financial Literacy Manager here at Bank of North Dakota. Welcome, Lance. Thank you, Stacy. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I guess it's evening. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining me. I appreciate it. Tonight, we're going to be talking about a very important topic to many of us, money, specifically your money. Money or lack of it is a common stressor in many people's lives. It's been said that money can be your best friend or your worst enemy, depending on how you use it. Tonight, we're going to give you some simple and basic advice on how to get the most out of your income, how to make a difference with your income and meet your goals. This is not rocket science, just timeless principles that will hopefully make your financial life even more effective. So if I could ask everybody in the audience that has a smartphone, a tablet, a laptop, a desktop, we're gonna do a little cahooting just to kind of ice break a little bit. If you would please take your device and go to kahoot.it, K-A-H-O-O-T.it. We're gonna just go over a series of questions and, and talk about them a little bit. I'll just give you a minute to get on and we will get started. Okay, if you would, once you get your Kahoot.it up, enter that game pin, 8932442. You can use your real name, you can use a nickname, but uh, just please get on there and we'll go through a few questions. Hey, Shannon, twin. Hey, Kelly. We'll give everybody just a few more seconds and we'll get going with our Kahoot. Okay, I think we are gonna get started. We are going to have a series of six questions on basic financial planning. So please answer them. Uh, some questions are not right or wrong, but here we go, question number one. When I think about managing money, I feel nervous, unqualified, or empowered. How do you feel about that? Five more seconds. All right, so most of you feel empowered, that's great. Uh, one said unqualified, one said nervous, and there are no right or wrong answers with this question. But what I would like to encourage you to do is talk to important people in your life. Have that communication. A lot of people never speak about money matters with their family, and some people are uh, embarrassed to, some people just don't feel it's an appropriate topic, but it's really a critical topic. Learn from them, ask them, you know, what did you do well financially? We all have made good financial decisions. On the flip side, ask, you know, what were some of your mistakes? If you have these conversations with your parents, your grandparents, uh, close friends and relatives, you can learn from their successes and you can learn from their failures so you don't have to do the same things over that previous generations have. On to the next question. What percentage of Americans use a budget? 
41% or 53%? What do you think? Five more seconds. Okay, so one of you actually got the correct answer. 41% of Americans actually use a budget. So even if you have not done a budget before, even by trying, even by starting out, don't feel, you know, it's okay to be frustrated at first. It takes a while to kind of smooth things out, but you are going to be ahead out of six of roughly 10 Americans by even attempting a budget. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about budgets in depth, but again, about four out of 10 Americans currently budget or attempt to budget. Next question. What are the four basic elements of a budget? Income, flexible expenses, fund money, savings, income expenses, housing and vacation, income fixed expenses, vehicle payments and credit cards, or income fixed expenses, flexible or unplanned expenses. What do you guys think? All right, so four of you got this right. It is the, the, the blue column, it's income. What money are you bringing in? Fixed expenses, uh, typically rent every month will be the same amount of money, a vehicle payment will be the same amount. Uh, there are exp expenses that are flexible like utilities, your, your heat bill, your air conditioning may go up or down and then unplanned expenses. We're gonna talk a little bit about what happens later in the presentation when life surprises us. Next question. A recommended spending plan looks like this. 50% needs, 30% wants, 20% savings, or is it 40% needs, 40% wants, 20% savings, 50% wants, 35 needs, 15 savings, or 30, 60, and 10? What do you guys think? Five seconds left. All right, the majority of the respondents got this right. Experts recommend that when you are looking at a spending plan, which is another word for a budget, you should allocate about half of your income to your needs. You know, things that you have to have to survive, 30% to wants. Everybody wants to have fun with their friends, they wanna be social, they want nice things. And then 20% to savings and debt reduction. So that is the formula that most experts say that most Americans should use when meeting their financial goals. Next question. A SMART goal is shared, measurable, aspirational, realistic, and timely. Specific, measurable, attainable, re realistic, time-bound. Specific, measurable, astute, radical, time-bound, or simple, massive, attainable, relevant, and timely. What do you guys think? All right, so the majority of you got the proper definition of a SMART goal. And later in the presentation, we're actually going to go through an example of a SMART goal with, with a, a sheet of paper that will give you some ideas on how to make SMART goals. So it has to be specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and within time constraints. Next question. Last one. A blank is a source of ready cash in case of an unplanned expense, illness, or the loss of a job. A certificate of deposit, a Christmas club account, an interest-bearing savings account, or an emergency fund. What do you guys think? Wow, that's 100%. You guys are on it. Yes, an emergency fund is a very handy uh, financial instrument to have in case life gets in the way, and life inevit inevitably always gets in the way. So again, it's really, really critical that you do have an emergency fund when things happen. Stacy, I'm going to turn it back over to you, please, and we'll get on with the presentation. Thank you guys for participating in that Kahoot. It's a great way to break the ice and, and kind of get a feel for what people think. All right. The first slide is learning how to budget. We are going to talk about the B word, the budget word. 
And a budget can be kind of intimidating to a lot of people, and it really should not be that way. Um, the first thing you need to do to be financially successful is to set up a budget. It's a critical skill that we all need to set and gain financial goals. So I don't know how many of you in the audience have already started a budget or tried to budget, but again, don't get frustrated. It, it does get easier over time, and it is a really critical tool for you to accomplish the goals, financial goals that you have set for yourself. Do you know how much money you're going to need once you leave home? Eventually, you're going to get out of high school. You're going to you know, make decisions, either go into the workforce or go to college. Uh, you know, And you're going to have to know basically what it's going to take for you to survive. So again, a budget is a great way to help you achieve that financial freedom. Stacy, if I could ask you to bring up the attached budget sheet, please. All right, this is a great example of a very basic budget. As you can see on the left side, there are different types of income. And for many of us, the only source of income that many of us have is a job. You may qualify for other forms of income, but most of us, if not all of us, have a job when it comes to income. On the right-hand side are the various types of general spending that most people have to do. Are you going to make a house payment or a rent payment? That is typically a big expense for most of us. Utilities, gas, water, electric, things like that. Groceries, we gotta eat. That is a big, big expense for most of us. Healthcare, transportation. Someday, you know, when if children come into the picture, education and childcare, that is a big, big part of your budget. Cell phone, internet, all of those things can really eat into your income. So you want your income on the left side in this specific example, your expenses on the right. And once you do the math, income, minus expenses, hopefully you break even or even come out ahead because this is where you have additional money to save and invest. So again, if your expenses are more than your income, you're gonna to have to look at your budget and cut out a few things that aren't as important to you uh, as, as you know your financial success in the future. Thanks, Stacy. So getting into wants versus needs, this is a big thing that most of us struggle with over time, but we're gonna talk about your spending, my spending. You know, a budget is not enough to move you towards your financial goals. Again, whether you decide to go directly into the workforce, uh, start in college or join the military, it's important that you prioritize your spending so you know what's important to you, what are your values, how are you gonna move forward with your financial goals? So you can break it down into uh, different types of goals. You can make short-term goals, such as saving for a deposit on an apartment that you want to move into, or for a down payment on a better vehicle, and set money aside for that. You want to take into consideration your expenses and be sure you're saving enough to cover those expenses too. But most of us ultimately struggle with knowing the difference between wants versus needs, although it's very simple. People have three basic needs, food, clothing, and shelter, three basic things. Wants, on the other hand, they are virtually limitless. Uh, so again, you have to be careful that you know a want versus a need and how that's going to impact the way you spend your money. Uh, you wanna watch out for emotional spending. So all of us have had tough days either at school or at work. When we are having an emotionally rough day, we tend to spend more money to make ourselves feel better. So you have to be careful about that. And to make matters worse, we as human beings are hardwired for instant gratification. That's why it's such a struggle for us to you know, think about long-term goals such as retirement, getting a down payment on a house and things like that. We're not wired that way uh, typically. Why is it hard to discipline our spending? Well, there's a lot of reasons in our society. In the United States, we are the most heavily marketed to uh, country in the history of the world. A lot of us you know, get bombarded with advertising. The average American, believe it or not, is exposed to between three and 5,000 ads every single day, whether it's on your smartphone, your laptop, your tablet, a billboard when you drive by it, newspapers, magazines, we are inundated with advertising. And you know, companies are very sophisticated in getting between us and our money. Anybody ever heard the, the, the phrase, just do it? You know, it's Nike, right? Everybody knows Nike, just do it. Marketing is designed to get us to buy things whether we can afford it or not, so we have to be careful about that. FOMO, fear of missing out. All my friends are having fun, they're, they're being social, they're having a good time. I deserve that too, I don't wanna miss out on all the action. And lastly, you know, keeping up appearances. 
I will give you a personal example. I have a next door neighbor that bought a really nice looking boat last summer. And I have to admit, I was uh, did have a tinge of jealousy with that. You know, it's very natural for us to compare ourselves to other people and what they have without knowing their full financial story. So a good example for me is Amazon Prime. I love Amazon Prime. I have literally spent hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars over the years, buying stuff because again, we are wired for instant gratification and businesses make us make it easy for us to buy things. So, you know, basically I have the whole World Wide Web in front of me. I find something, I like it, I click buy, it's tied to my credit card and miraculously two days later, it ends up on my doorstep. It's like magic, right? But I have wasted a lot of my money and I've blown my budget several times by making those spontaneous choices. I have a new rule when it comes to Amazon Prime and that's if I wanna buy an item that costs $100 or more, I have to give myself 24 hours before I pull the trigger on that purchase. I write it down on a list and then 24 hours later, if I still want it, I will at that point buy it. But miraculously, after 24 hours goes by, a lot of times I don't want what I originally thought I wanted. So again, knowing the difference between wants versus needs is critical. Now, I would like to show you a, a series of videos that we have produced at the Bank of North Dakota. Stacy, if you wouldn't mind bringing that up, please. Bank of North Dakota has their own YouTube channel, and we have a series of videos called Budgeting 101. Uh, as you can see, we talk about savings, reducing debt, you know, why was the money taken out of my paycheck, needs versus wants, which we're talking about right now. I'd really highly encourage you to check out these two to three minute videos. Uh, they're done by Stacy and Amanda at our, our company at the Bank of North Dakota, and they've done a tremendous job in boiling down concepts over a matter of two or three minutes that will really have an impact on your bottom line. So again, please go to the BND YouTube channel, click pay playlist, and then go into the budgeting 101 series just for a lot of great information on how to do better financial decisions by learning from Stacy and Amanda and these videos. Thanks, Stacy. All right, now we have to think about the future as well. And I know I'm talking to an audience of high school students and their parents, but you have to plan for your future. You know, if you don't create a financial plan while you're in school or you're working, chances are you're not gonna be ready when financial opportunities arise and, and they do pop up. You know, these might include things like buying a new car, a newer car, not necessarily a brand new car, eventually getting a down payment on purchasing a home. And I know at your age, these events seem like they are in the far distant future, but it's really important that you start thinking about them right now, because again, if you have a plan, it's gonna be that much easier when the opportunity comes. Remember the importance of paying your bills on time? Your payment history will have a big impact on your ability to qualify for loans down the road. Now, I am not here to suggest you take out a lot of loans. That is not what I'm here for. But when the time comes, you probably will need to take out a loan when you get a, want a house. You know, most of us can't come up with that kind of money. So again, using loans responsibly is the key to getting ahead of life as well. You can leverage things like that. And again, goals change over time. You know, financial goals you may have at 16 or 18 years old can seem really out of touch by the time you reach 25 or 30. So goals can change. You don't have to stay with the same goals if your life changes. You can break your goals into short-term goals, which are typically less than two months, medium-term goals, which are two months to three years, and then long-term goals are typically three years or more. Uh, Stacy, if I could ask you to bring up the SMART goal sheet, please. All right, this is a really great resource for discovering what your goals are, uh, SMART goals. And we had this in the Kahoot, what makes up a SMART goal? But it's really important that you know what values are important to you and financially what your goals are. So are you looking for freedom, for health, for a, a new home, things of that nature? This SMART goal worksheet can help you get through that. And I'm gonna give you an example of what a SMART goal actually is. So let's just say that you have an older vehicle you know time is running out on this vehicle and you wanna buy something newer. So in this example, you want a specific goal. So you want a newer vehicle and your goal is going to be, I will save $10,000 for a better vehicle in one year. So you got 12 months to save up $10,000, that's spe specific. It's measurable. So 
I'm assuming you have a job if you're going to save up $10,000 for a car. I will need to save $416.66 every pay period, assuming you get paid twice a month. So that's measurable. You know if you save the $416.66, you can come up with your $10,000 goal. Is a $10,000 vehicle achievable? For most of us, it is. How are, how are you going to get there? Do you have to work overtime? Do you need to reduce your budget categories in other categories to save up for the vehicle? For example, if you have a big entertainment budget or a big food budget, can you minimize those a little bit to give you more money for your new vehicle budget? So again, there are many, many ways to make it achievable. Is it relevant to your life? Is your current car unsafe? You know, I've driven a couple of clunkers in my life and you don't wanna do that in North Dakota when it's, when it's cold out, right? So if you do need a car, it's relevant to you. It's not like you're buying a $60,000 sport car, you're buying a $10,000 better used vehicle. So again, that is relevant. And the time frame, the time bound is there because you're gonna save $10,000 in one year. So again, by clarifying your goals uh, into a SMART goal, you have a much better chance of achieving that goal. Uh, according to Forbes magazine, written goals are 1.4 times more likely to succeed than just thinking about a goal. So put them in writing, make it a SMART goal, and you're going to make your life that much easier. Next slide, please. All right, now we're gonna talk a little bit about expenses. Uh, some that you expect, some that you don't expect. So expenses are gonna come up when you don't expect them. Interruptions in attending college, for example. You may have a car breakdown that needs repair. You may break your arm, fall down, and have a medical bill. So it's always good to be proactive and think about these things. For example, for those of you that are considering going to college, did you know that if you drop out of college, any student loan balance owed will generally enter repayment six months later? So again, that might be an unexpected expense if you decide to take a break from college. Having an emergency fund, that was one of our Kahoot questions. Call it a life happens fund. Really, really important, and it can help you recover from those unexpected things that happen in life and take some of the financial burden off of you. Having an emergency fund is really the difference of having some money in the bank to cover some unexpected expenses versus having to put them, for example, on a credit card at a high interest rate. Many credit cards are at 18, 20, 23%. So again, just having some money in your savings account will really help you when life doesn't go your way. Many people try to start out by saving one month's income or a goal of $1,000 and then slowly building it up as you work on your other financial goals. You wanna remember to keep saving for your financial future. Even having a couple of hundred dollars in the bank can be a big difference when life throws you a curveball, and life always throws all of us curveballs eventually, so you might as well be prepared for it. One recommendation when it comes to savings, automate it, make it easy. Take it directly out of your paycheck when you get a job so you never miss it, and it is really a painless way to save. I do it with my retirement. It's taken out of my check, I don't think twice about it, and I know I'm being consistent with it. If you will look at that middle jar on that screen, I'm going to talk a little bit about retirement to you. And I, I know you're thinking, well, I'm in high school. Why am I thinking about retirement at my age? And I know it seems like a lifetime away, but believe me, once you get out of high school, depending on what you want to do, whether it's go into the workforce, go to college, join the military, little bits of money over a long period of time, typically the average American has a 35 to 40 year career. If you consistently put little bits of money away over a long period of time, you will have a very nice nest egg by the time you retire. And I know that's a hard concept when you're 16 or 18 years old, but just remember, when you get that first job, make sure you join the, the company retirement plan and just start saving little bits of money. Time is your best friend when you're young. Next slide, please. I'd like to bring your attention to the Bank of North Dakota financial literacy resource page. So you want to make sure you're making smart money choices when you graduate from high school. You know, again, we talked about it, paying your bills on time, evaluating decisions on when to take on additional debt for a vehicle, taking out credit cards, things of that nature. So again, you want to start out with positive habits that are going to help set you up with a good financial foundation. You are at the really at the prime stage of life to start making really good foundational choices which again will help you in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s. It builds and builds and builds. 
you want to make sure you're a lifelong learner. Take advantage of free resources such as personal finance books, websites, and blogs. There are bloggers out there that made a complete mess of their financial lives and they hit rock bottom and they made some pretty radical decisions to turn their lives around. It's really, really inspirational. So again, like having those conversations with your family, read from bloggers that have made mistakes and turned their life around. It's very inspirational and it will help you make those decisions. Don't forget, we showed you uh, some of those videos. Check out our Stacy and Amanda videos on our YouTube channel. Our financial literacy resource page on BND, Bank of North Dakota has just a vast array of resources that can help you. We have interactive games that we just put on there uh, that will teach you about insurance, budgeting, paying for college, managing credit, things like that. So again, take advantage of all of these free opportunities to make your financial lives that much better. Next slide, please. All right. So I just want to wish all of you the best of luck with your money goals and finances. Remember, this is not rocket science, but being successful financially requires small positive changes over a long period of time. You guys can do this. With that, I'd like to ask the audience if they have any questions for me to answer for them. And again, um, put your questions down in the chat or the question box and we will answer them. Lance, we do have a few questions um, for you. The first is how often should I update my budget? So budgets are typically done on a month by month basis. The one thing you have to remember is it can be a little frustrating at first if you've never budgeted before, but give yourself four months, five months, six months to kind of work it out a little bit. No budget is going to look the same every month. Uh, December is coming up with the holidays, Christmas, things like that. Your December budget is gonna look much different than your May budget. It's not supposed to be the same budget month after month. It's gonna change, it's going to be fluid. I would recommend that you you know, do it in 30 day or monthly increments. Uh, that's what most people do and that really will help you to, to, to determine where you need to make changes or where your values are. Great, thank you. Um, let's see, next is, if I have a little extra money, should I put it in a savings account or invest it in the stock market? Okay, well, first of all, a little caveat, I am not allowed to give financial advice. That is a personal decision. And it all depends on what your needs are. If you don't have an emergency fund, it's probably best to get a few hundred to a thousand dollars in that emergency fund for when life happens. Once you hit that emergency fund and, and it's funded and you think you're okay, if you feel that you want to invest, and I'm all for investing, I think it's a great way to plan for your future. Talk to somebody, a family member, uh, a family friend, and, and get their advice. But you know, make sure you have your emergency fund covered, in my opinion before you start investing. And I cannot give financial advice, but that's good basic advice. Wonderful, thank you. Um, we've got two more questions and then we will wrap it up as we were as we are coming to our 7.30 timeframe here. Um, the next is how do I budget for a one-time expense? Okay, so a one-time expense is, is, the term is what we call it is a sinking fund. So it's basically a one-time thing that you, you want to purchase. So for example, if you if you want to buy something that is a twelve hundred dollars, you create a sinking fund or a separate savings account. And if your your time frame is a year, remember we talked about smart goals. You put a hundred dollars a month in that sinking fund for twelve months or one year, and guess what? You've just accomplished your financial goal. You'll have enough money to pay for it or whatever your time frame is. But uh, again, a one time purchase is considered a sinking fund. You put money in consistently until you reach your goal. Okay. Wonderful, and last question, and I think this is an excellent question as well. Um, how do I budget when my monthly income varies? That is a tricky question. So a lot of us don't have uh, the same amount of income coming in uh, every month. So for example, you could be in sales, you could be a commissioned uh, employee where your, your income is going to vary greatly. What the recommendation is, is knowing what your average monthly expenses are and on good months when you have a lot of commissions or you have a lot of work, work is going well, you pocket that money knowing that in a couple of months, your income could dry up a little bit. But by by, you know, not having that consistent income, as long as you're saving a little bit extra for the future, you should be able to handle those bumps along the way when your low income months are slow. That's typically what people do who are on commission or have fluctuating income. 
great questions. All right. Thank you, Lance. That wraps up our questions. And thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, our next career discovery webinar is this Thursday, October 29th from 7 to 7.30 p.m. Central Time. This session will be an agricultural panel. Attendees will learn about various ag careers, the variety of educational and career paths our panelists took to get to where they are, as well as what skills are needed to be successful in this ever-changing environment. You can register for this session on the Career Compass website at careercompass.nd.gov. Thanks again, Lance, for bringing us through this session tonight, and thanks everyone for attending. Have a great evening. Bye.